Professor Gross, uh, we've heard that Hawking said that uh, there is that is meaningless to ask about time and what it was before the Big Bang. Traditionally, we've never worried about trying to answer that question. It wasn't part of physics, it was religion or philosophy. But today we must. And it's a new kind of question because naturally people ask if there was a beginning of time, what happened before? There have been some speculations. One of them is Hawking with my colleague Jim Hartle proposed that there is in a sense no beginning. You go into complex space-time and it rounds off. That's one idea. Other ideas are that the universe bounces. It collapses and then bounces and some people speculate that those bounces go on forever. And there was no beginning and no end, just bounces. Personally, I believe that one of the reasons we don't know how to answer that question at the moment is that we don't know how to correctly formulate the question. The developments that we have are not connected with a certain period of time of the time of the time. The time of the time of the time of the time is that the time of the time of the time, that when we look back, πίσω α, όταν ήταν η χτιμισή ηλικία του mm -hmm. οι παρατηρήσεις δείχνουν ότι επιβραδυνόταν την εποχή εκείνη ενώ τώρα επιβραδύνεται λιγότερο και γι' αυτό το λόγο λίγο πολύ όλοι μιλούν για επιτάχυση του σύμπαντος mm -hmm. από, ό,τι θέλουν, από ό,τι δείχνουν τα δεδομένα Έχουμε φτάσει στο σημείο που περνάει κανείς από την επιβράδυνση στην επιτάχυνση. In cosmology we have also some other theories. Why don't we accept this theory and we're accepting the Big Bang? Well, we have, because we have evidence, direct evidence, that th there was a 13.7, or actually 13.65 billion years ago, the universe was very hot and very dense. That's what traditionally was called the Big Bang. We see pictures, we see light coming from um, the universe when it was only 300,000 years ago. So we can measure the properties of the universe 13.3 billion years ago. We have the Higgs uh, boson. Uh, they said that there is a great probability that they found it in 2030, but we're not very sure. Is it possible oh, to have found sure. something different, a new particle, and it's not the boson Higgs? Of course. Well, this particle that was discovered meets every test, you know, and there's a saying in English, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's probably a duck. So this looks like a Higgs. Το καθιερωμένο μοντέλο και όλες αυτές οι θεωρίες, οι οποίες είναι θεωρίες όμως, έτσι. Όχι, δεν είναι μοντέλο, είναι θεωρία που έχει, διότι αυτή είναι η λέξη. Σε μεγάλο ποσοστό. Όχι, όχι, έχει επιβεβαιωθεί σε πολύ μεγάλη ακρίβεια από τις παρατηρήσεις. Επομένως, δεν είναι θεωρία με την έννοια του Έχω μια θεωρία που κάνει αυτό το πράγμα, λέει αυτό και μπορεί. Είναι ε, θεωρία όπως η ηλεκτρομαγνητική θεωρία που έχει επιβεβαιωθεί με πάρα πολλές παρατηρήσεις. Τώρα, είναι η τελε, τελειωτική θεωρία, δεν ξέρουμε. Κοιτάζουμε λοιπόν με τις ε, παρατηρήσεις στο LHC, στο CERN, να δούμε αν μπορούμε να βρούμε κάτι που να πηγαίνει πέρα από αυτή τη θεωρία. Μέχρι στιγμής δεν έχει βρεθεί. <coughs> αυτό που έχουμε βρεθεί, βρει μέχρι στιγμής είναι ότι με την έβρεση του Higgs, ότι αυτό τόσο ο αριθμός των αλληλεπιδράσεων ασθενών ή ηλεκτρομαγνητικών ισχυρών α, συν την οικογένεια των σωματιδίων, συν το Higgs, αποτελούν ένα οικοδόμημα το οποίο λίγο πολύ είναι αυτόνομο και στέκεται από μόνο του. Are we going for a, to have answers sometimes? Well, I, who knows, but history teaches us in, in science not just in physics, but in other sciences as well, that as soon as we have, as soon as a question becomes scientific, as opposed to religious or philosophical, when it becomes scientific, which means we can do experiments, we can do measurements, we can do observation, we can model the phenomena, try to explain it theoretically, we answer those questions very quickly.